Smartphone cameras are famously poor at nighttime. The trouble comes because the image sensor needs as much light as possible, but in the absence of it, when there is little around, needs to be exposed for longer. And if you can't hold your phone completely steady while the sensor is being exposed, you've got a blurry photo. So Huawei claims they've got a solution to the problem. And today I've partnered up with the company to see if it's any good. Night mode. And the way this works is surprising. The camera shutter is open for a full four seconds compared to a 20th of a second for a standard low light photo or less than a 50th of a second for a daylight shot. And in that time, you'll notice the phone will cycle through a series of different exposures. It then takes the best parts of the image at each of these exposures and splices them together. Now, four seconds is a huge amount of time to have the shutter open, but Huawei claims that you can still create blur-free photos thanks to its AIS or artificial intelligence stabilization. This should enable the camera to filter out your hand movements during this four second period, so the phone takes the picture as if it was on a tripod. Essentially, this is a more sophisticated version of digital stabilization that other cameras use, but the difference is this implementation of AI technology, which also, funnily enough, addresses the age old problem in the world of photography, namely that you can now take long exposure images without the need for the tripod. Let's see how it stacks up. So for this test, I took out three phones with me. I took the Huawei P20 Pro, the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, and the OnePlus 6. And I took the same photos on all three phones, but with the P20 Pro, I was using night mode. And looking at these side by sides, you can probably tell this feature is no joke. You've got the caveat of having to hold the phone still for four seconds while taking this kind of shot, but the level of detail, the sharpness, the high dynamic range here is on an entirely different level. Not only that, but the color temperature sensor is actively monitoring the image to see if it's too warm or too cool and trying to tweak it accordingly. So this yellowy redness you see on the other two phones in this picture is not at all mirrored in the P20 Pro. It's been cancelled out by the color correction. You'll also probably notice how far ahead of the OnePlus 6 the S9 Plus is due mostly to its wider f1.5 aperture versus f1.7. One more thing, because with the Huawei you're capturing the best parts of the image at each of these exposures, you tend not to have blowouts. So as you can see looking at the clock tower over here, on the S9 Plus that is basically capturing a single frame, you've got a little bit of loss of detail in the highlights. Same story on the OnePlus 6 which has actually brightened the whole image to compensate for the lack of light. Okay, take a look at the people in these pictures. You'll probably notice the amount of motion blur from people walking around while I'm taking the shot is actually lowest on the Huawei P20 Pro. And you actually expect it to be the opposite. You expect there to be more blur in the photos when you've got the shutter open for longer. But night mode is able to compensate for this. It won't work 100% of the time, in which case you might want to switch back to auto, but we'll get back to this. You do need to hold the phone steady while taking a night mode shot, but from my experience, any normal amount of hand wobble is absolutely fine. It's not expecting you to be a robot. Now, night mode is a double-edged blade. Not only is it letting us take better low light shots, but it also means the P20 Pro can see in areas where other phones pretty much can't. In lighting conditions around or under five lux, which is so dim that the human eye is barely able to see objects, the P20 Pro almost looks like you stuck a floodlight behind. Honest, this is very, very cool. Now, an interesting flip side to night mode on the P20 Pro is you can use it during the day. This is really something you do for fun. The success rate compared to almost 100% at nighttime is pretty mixed in the day, but when it does work, because you're capturing so much more information about the subject you're shooting, the images can have a much higher dynamic range. All right, back to nighttime. And if you didn't want to use night mode on the P20 Pro, how does the low light camera performance stack up? Well, to say one thing, Huawei's advantage isn't quite as clear. But you've probably heard about Huawei's triple camera setup with its 40 megapixel sensor and it sounds glorious. But due to the slower capture times of a 40 megapixel image and the large storage space requirements, you might find yourself sticking to the default 10 megapixel photos. Whilst this might make it seem like that 40 megapixel sensor is now being wasted, it is actually playing a very important role here. The phone uses something Huawei calls pixel fusion, pretty similar to the better known industry known term pixel binning. And this combines four smaller pixels into one larger pixel. 
that is an average of its components. So any pixels that originally contained noise are now averaged out, and therefore noise is vastly reduced. So if we crop into these low light shots, all taken in auto mode on the three phones, you'll see that a lack of noise is a strong point for the P20 Pro. But color profile wise, whereas I would say with night mode, Huawei P20 Pro is the clear winner, in auto, it's kind of personal preference. With video, the lines become a bit more blurred, literally. The S9 Plus suffers by far the most, and the OnePlus 6 and P20 Pro both remain respectable. But again, if you inspect them closely, you'll notice the P20 Pro's image is not only sharper, but taking a look at the tiles on the floor over here, it's maintained a lot more of the texture of the image. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you guys next time.